Darren Levine here at Media Halo with Bobby the Production Bird, and here we can show you the Atomos Ninja Blade. So let's just go right into the raw details. This is, of course, an HDMI only monitor. If you want SDI, you'll need to get their Samurai Blade, or you can get a converter that goes from HDMI to SDI that actually fits right in between one of the batteries. Pretty nifty. So let's take a look around it. You get two battery mounts. One is primary, and that's the one you need to put a battery on to boot it up. And then it drains that one first, and then the secondary. That means you can hot swap while recording indefinitely or until your card runs out. Speaking of cards, you get the single bay, which you can put in either SSDs or regular spinning hard drives. I prefer the SSDs. You also get an HDMI loop through or output to another HDMI monitor. You get a headphone output so you can monitor audio. This thing does pull audio from HDMI if the camera is sending it. If not, you can always plug into the line input. That's great. So if you have a dual system sound or some other sound guy recording, you can plug directly into this to get sync sound in the box. Now, sometimes you may have an issue where the audio is not quite synced up properly in the box. They give you an adjustment to fix that right in the box. Nice. There's also an LENC port to get external control over it. On the other side, you get the uh, lonely little power button. I did notice the power button, if you don't read the manual, you might press it, why isn't it on, press it, why isn't it on. Single, hard, press, give it a few seconds, it'll turn on. That's why you should read the manual. I know, I sometimes skip that part too. So, you get two different quarter 20 taps, one on the bottom, one on the top. I feel like they could have fit another one over here, but that's fine, two works for me. And you'll notice that I put these skinny HDMI cables on. That's what I recommend. If you get any sort of external monitor, recording, or whatnot, those regular HDMI cables are thick and bulky and annoying. Skinny HDMI cables, as long as you're not abusing them, they, are work, they work just fine. They're not obviously as rugged as thicker cables, but I don't abuse my equipment, or at least try not to. So these skinny cables make rigging these much, much cleaner. You may also notice I've got these right angle adapters to clean it up even more. I've gaff taped them because, well, it's another point of possible connection failure. So far, this has worked perfectly solidly, but some people might prefer to not add those extra points of contact and would rather just you know, deal with the extra cables kind of coming out a little bit farther. But that's just personal preference. So one of the nice things about Atomos is they give you a lot for your money. One of the things is, Two codecs, not just one. You can choose from ProRes or DNxHD. I'm not going to get into a whole debate of which is better, why they're better than the whole the internal recording. Suffice it to say, both options are definitely better than the internal recording. Internal recording, as many of you may know, works great for what it is. But the options you have to record to DNxHD or ProRes in 8 or 10 bit, far superior. And one little tidbit about 8 versus 10 bit, even though most of these cameras like the C100 are only outbidding 8 bit, if you're gonna do a lot of heavy effects, color grading and whatnot, where you're pushing and pulling the footage, it's always a good idea to record to 10 bit. No, you're not getting a magical 10 bit upgrade, but you are getting that headroom, which helps to not degrade the footage once you're grading. Little tidbit. So, as you'll see, your frame rate options, you can change right on the front screen. It's interlace 5994, 2997 or 23.98. That's it, no higher frame rates, just those three. Overall, I am pretty happy with the whole UI interface. It's pretty clean and simple and works. What about the touchscreen? A lot of you know I'm not a fan of touchscreens, but this one is one of the better ones I've used. It's capacitive, so it's a lot like your cell phone, and it registers taps pretty nicely. The one thing I didn't like is that a lot of the little sliders, like the headphone one here, you gotta put your finger over it and you can't always get it to exactly where you want. Like with the Zebra menu, I'm trying to get it exactly at 100 and it keeps jumping from 95 to 105. So maybe they can implement one of those, you know, like on cell phones, if you select a text, it gives you that little handle underneath where you're trying to select so you can still see what you're trying to select. So Atomos, look, look into that. So what other recording options are there? Metadata, get a nice little scene and shot selection just two basic numbers, no information, which is fine by me. And in the display options menu, you have the option to control the brightness and a bunch of other different options, as well as an adjust screen menu. This gives you a C-Log button, which basically is like the Ken's view assist. It gives you kind of a LUT pre-graded look, so you can see what it's gonna look like after a little bit of grading. Nice for when you're shooting flat. 
And if you want to fine tune it even more, there's a couple of other options here to adjust. And what's nice is that if that's not enough for you to really fine tune the monitoring aspect of this, you can also buy their Spider Color Calibrator. So that'll get this as perfect as it can be. So how about playback? Pretty nice. Press the play button, takes a second, loads up your clips. Click a clip, starts playing right away. That's nice. It's probably got a nice amount of uh, CPU power in here. And you can scrub very quickly. Press a, nine, press a location, goes right to it. So it's really quick to be able to play something back. That's nice. You know, sometimes on the camera, you gotta switch to the playback mode and it takes a bunch of seconds to reboot into that. This, much quicker. And the other nice thing is that you can flag items, good or bad. You know, if you like the whole take, flag it all good. If you don't like it, flag it all bad. But you can also flag within the take. So say you were kept recording and you didn't start and stop for a bunch of different takes. Well, you can go in, it helps to pause it, by the way, instead of doing it while playing. Say you like the first part of it. Okay, I like there to there. Cool. But from here to here, I did not like. There you go. You got some metadata flagging what you liked and didn't like all ready to go. So how about as a proper monitor? Does it do that well? See, because the other ninjas, they were lower resolution and just not very good to use as a judge of image. This one has upgraded to 1280 by 720 screen resolution. And for this size screen, it's a really good resolution. It's a really high dots per inch. So you can judge focus pretty darn well. And even if you don't think you can judge it pretty well, there's extra features to help you out. You go up here, oh, that's it, and you enable focus peaking. Focus peaking gives you a visual color dots uh, around what is in focus. And it really helps. The one thing I wish they would have added though is a strength slider to really adjust how strong the effect is. But other than that, they do actually give you the ability to adjust seven different colors. <laughs> so that's pretty nice. And right below it, as you can see, we've got these zebras, which is a good indicator of exposure. It goes from 50 to 105% of zebras, even though for some reason in the manual, it shows it at 35%, not sure why. But you can also, in the peaking mode again, you can choose between monochrome and outline modes just for some other options. Now, one thing I wish they would have given us is a digital zoom in, one-to-one -one mapping, or otherwise digital punch in to help judge focus. Not a big deal, but it's something I would like to see you implement, Atomos, if you're watching. Now, let's say you just want to get rid of all the information on the screen. Just one touch gets rid of everything. Now, the thing that really makes this a proper usable monitor are the holy trinity of exposure judgment tools. And that would be the waveform, the RGB parade, and the vector scopes. Beautiful. Now, the nice thing is that you can obviously use them full screen, or you have the option to drop them to the bottom, or in this case, the vector scope can just go to the bottom right. Even nicer, you can adjust the opacity so you can see what's going on behind them. So is there anything else I can nitpick about this? Well, I can't really say I wish it did 4K. They just came out with the Shogun for that, and it's obviously a higher price point. But the Shogun is a seven inch monitor. I really prefer the five inch. Big question, how usable is it outdoors? It does have 400 nits of brightness, which is great, helps a lot but it is very shiny and reflective. And even if you use this nice, albeit kind of annoying to attach hood, if there's anything lit up behind the screen, namely your face, then you're gonna see a reflection of that. So even though if the sun is not hitting the screen directly, if the sun's hitting your face and you're looking straight at it, you're gonna see your face. So the one way to get around that, add a matte screen protector. I've had good luck with them in the past. Just don't go and buy a crappy one, because they tend to, you know, fuzzy up the screen a little bit. So get a high-end one that's going to maintain as much of the clarity as possible. So that's really it for the Atomos Ninja Blade. Its price point is $1,000, and there's not really a whole lot of competition in that price point that gives you all these features. It's well put together. In my opinion, the five-inch size is a nice size, and it's got enough features that really can help you get along with whatever you need to do. If you need something bigger and better, it's going to cost you a lot more nickel. So that is what I think about after this you know, starts to loosen up the Atomos Ninja Blade. So any other test I can really do is see if the bird gives it a nibble of approval. Yeah, very gentle nibble of approval. The best kind there is. So that is it for the Atomos Ninja Blade. I am Darren Levine. This is Bobby the Production Bird, and this is MediaHub.com.